हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल ड्रॉप अ लाइक शेयर एंड कमेंट टुडे इज ट्रांसक्रिप्शन नंबर 474 ऑफ सर कैलाश चंद्र वॉल्यूम नंबर 22 ऑन द स्पीड ऑफ 120 वर्ड्स पर मिनट स्टार्ट मिस्टर डेप्यूटी चेयरमैन आई हैव अ फ्यू ब्रीफ रिमार्क्स टू मेक इफ आई मे से सो आई थिंक in this honorable house when we discuss such a matter as this it would be better and in the fitness of things if we discuss it in terms of principles instead of introducing names of individuals how many rupees who gets or the names of individual firms i am not in the least interested to defend high salaries paid by any business firm either in clive street calcutta or in any other street anywhere else but i think as a matter of principle we should avoid mentioning names of individuals and firms because it seems to be unjust and unfair we in this house are a privileged group of people but we should be very careful about using our privilege otherwise we might do damage to the prestige and authority of parliament in the eyes of the public now sir i think we should discuss this measure in terms of principles and policies and the two important basic points that are involved in this are a question of investment and a question of incentives we have decided to bring about what we call a socialist society in this country and a socialist society does not mean that we should engage ourselves in working out a just distribution of poverty The main purpose of a socialist society is to produce a sufficiently large volume of wealth so that we can provide our people with at least the minimum requirements of civilized human existence in terms of food, cloth, housing, health, education and so on. Obviously this wealth production and the volume of it that we require in terms of our situation requires investment on a massive scale a socialist society has to invest capital in order to produce wealth it may interest my honorable friend to know that in the planning commission in russia there is a whole time member whose designation is member in charge of capital investment it sounds rather odd that a socialist country has to appoint a man whose principal anxiety is to work out the best way of capital use now sir in any kind of society such as ours it is possible to work out the amount of savings that the society can possibly make in terms of its own situation and the amount of investment that is necessary in order to produce the volume of wealth that we have got to produce if we are going to achieve our social objectives the difference between what we have got to invest and what we can possibly save in terms of our own society is a very wide gap in our situation and that gap has to be filled obviously by importing capital from wherever we can get it if we can get it from a socialist or a communist society by all means we should take it if we cannot get enough from them we have to take it from other kinds of society whether we agree or disagree with the social purposes or the kind of political organizations that they believe in that consideration is totally irrelevant now the principal organizer of the socialist society in india that is our leader the prime minister has himself said that he wants foreign private capital to come into this country
इट इज नॉट दैट इट इज अ वेरी डिजायरेबल थिंग इट इज अ नेसेसरी थिंग वेदर यू लाइक इट और नॉट बिकॉज अदरवाइज मेयरली बाय इम्पोर्टिंग कैपिटल विच इज पब्लिक कैपिटल ओन्ड बाय गवर्नमेंट्स इन दोज एरियाज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वेयर सरप्लस कैपिटल एग्जिस्ट we cannot possibly bring into this country that volume of capital which is necessary to fill in this gap between savings and investment therefore as a matter of state policy the government of this country has decided with the approval of parliament that there is room for investment of foreign private capital also in our economy we are perfectly entitled to say that we do not want foreign private capital to be invested here at all but we cannot have it both ways we cannot eat our cake and have it too if on the one hand we want foreign capital from other countries we have to create a state of affairs in which they feel induced to come and invest their capital as i have said we are free to say that we do not want it but if we do want it we cannot at the same time insist on creating conditions which forbid them to do so which they find extremely discouraging and one of the things by which we could prevent foreign capital from coming into this country is to approve of a measure such as this i am not saying that this measure is necessarily wrong i am not suggesting that it is necessarily good and important all that i am saying is if you do want foreign capital then do not pass this legislation